Mount Everest is known around the world as being the tallest mountain on the planet. Because of this, the mountain has been the target of countless hiking expeditions throughout the years, with many avid climbers doing their best to reach the summit of this remarkably large mountain. Everest, a part of the Himalayas, is estimated to be about 8,849 meters tall. This height is so incredibly impressive that it's hard to imagine the the mountain in all of its glory without seeing it in person. This has led to many adventurers becoming a bit more than curious about the terrain of the mountain, oftentimes putting their lives at risk to conquer the tallest mountain in the world. However, even though Everest has been around for as long as humans have roamed the Earth, it wouldn't be until the 1950s that the first official Mount Everest expedition would be completed. There had been many attempts prior to this point, but in 1953 the mountain was finally conquered. However, it should be mentioned that the jury is still out regarding whether or not this truly was the first successful expedition. What we know for sure is that the mountain has been successfully conquered around 8,400 times so far. The trip is extremely dangerous, and we know that hundreds of climbers who attempted to trek the mountain did not make it out alive, with their bodies serving as trail markers for many years to come. Even with all of this in mind, Everest is still a mountain that's shrouded in mystery, and many strange and bizarre occurrences have taken place on the world's largest mountain over the years. Today, we would like to introduce you to some of the strangest and most unexplainable things that have happened on Mount Everest. Be sure to stick around for number two, because it's very hard to believe. Also, before we get started, be sure to hit that like button and ring the notification bell for more videos. Maurice Wilson Maurice Wilson is by all means a very determined individual. The Englishman made it his life's goal to conquer Mount Everest, doing everything within his power to do so. At the beginning of the 1930s, he had planned onboarding a plane and heading to Tibet. Once there, he would enter the country and make his way to a small village that was set up near the giant mountain. However, he wanted to do all of this single-handedly. For Maurice, this even meant flying his own plane, even though he had no prior pilot experience. He set about learning how to fly and eventually made his way to India successfully, though after he arrived, he was turned away. He was not allowed to enter the country, nor the town he planned to visit. In a last-minute effort to gain entry, Maurice asked for help from Karma Paul, a local who had concocted a plan to help Maurice get into the village. We don't know for sure why Maurice was turned away, but we do know that at the time only locals were allowed to enter Tibet. This meant that Maurice needed to disguise himself as a local in order to get inside. Since he didn't have the accent that was necessary to get past the town guards, Karma Paul came up with an idea for Maurice to pretend to be both blind and mute in order to get past the guards. This may sound completely ridiculous, but it actually worked. When Maurice approached the gate alongside Karma Paul, the two were granted permission to enter. This was the first success of what would soon become a difficult and tumultuous journey for Maurice. After getting past the guards, Maurice was taken to a nearby monastery, where he'd spend about three weeks before gathering the courage to venture to Mount Everest. He set out in the spring of 1934, believing himself to be fully equipped to conquer the mountain. Once he arrived, however, he realized that conditions were far worse than he could have ever anticipated. He made it a short way up the mountain, but a heavy snowstorm hit and forced Maurice to return to the monastery. He would spend a few more weeks there, recovering from the storm, but his spirit was not broken. Maurice had his mind set on conquering the mountain, and he was willing to do it at all costs. The former military officer decided to enlist the help of three locals to conquer the mountain and have his name permanently etched into history books. 
The small team headed out for the mountain and once again made it a short way up the terrain. However, the locals soon learned just how ill-prepared Maurice really was. As they would soon find out, Maurice had never used an ice pick before, so they had to teach him to climb up the large hill. To top this off, on his first trek up the mountain, he'd left several of his tools behind, meaning it was impossible for him to make it past a large wall of ice that was impeding their path. This meant that, against Maurice's wishes, the team had to turn back and return to the village. Maurice went with them, but shortly after arriving, he asked them to return to the mountain with him after he'd gathered some new supplies and tools. To his surprise, the men refused to accompany him a second time, insisting that he was not prepared for such a journey. Maurice was angered by this and decided to set out by himself once again. He would disappear into the cold and snowy weather, never to be seen alive again. His body would be found the following year in 1935 after he'd passed away during his adventure. Still to this day, more than 80 years later, investigators don't know for sure what caused him to lose his life. We can safely assume that the weather was just too much for him to bear, but his case has remained cold for many decades. Inexplicable Ghost Sightings Everyone loves a good ghost story, right? Well, what if this story involved one of the most famous mountains in the world and, according to legend, is 100% true? For the local Sherpa people, Mount Everest is much more than your average mountain. They feel that the mountain holds religious significance and is highly important to their culture. They consider the mountain to be a natural sanctuary and are convinced that the mountain is home to many spirits that roam around, calling the icy terrain their eternal home. It's not unheard of for remote areas like this to have some rather interesting religious beliefs about the natural world. However, the local Sherpa people claim that their beliefs are backed up by real-world evidence, with many locals claiming to have first-hand encounters with ghosts and spirits who reside on the mountain. Pemba Dorji, a local member of the Sherpa people, is a world record holder for the fastest Everest ascent in human history. According to the record books, Pemba managed to climb the mountain in a staggering 8 hours and 10 minutes. He said that his journey went without a hitch, and for the most part, everything went according to plan. However, as he made his way back down from the summit of the mountain, he had an encounter that he has never been able to explain. He said that he was heading back to his village home when he was suddenly surrounded by several dark, misty figures. He didn't know who they were or what they were at first, but they began to speak to him. He says that they began to beg him for food, and he immediately knew that these must have been the wandering souls of those who'd lost their lives on the mountain. We don't know if he offered the spirits food or not, but when he made it back to the village, he shared his story with everyone he knew, and no one questioned it. The 27-year-old had led many people to believe that the stories and legends of wandering spirits living on the mountain may be more than just folklore. After all, of the 300 people who've passed away on the mountain, only about 150 have ever had their bodies recovered. Russian Expedition of 1952 This story is very strange and has never been explained even after more than 50 years have passed. According to historians, back in 1952, the Russian government sponsored an expedition to the summit of Mount Everest. If the ascent was successful, it would have marked the first time anyone had successfully made it to the top of the mountain. The idea was for this small team of climbers to reach the summit and place photos of Lenin and Stalin at the top, with Russia claiming this victory as a win for the entire country. We know that the hikers made it a long way up the mountain. We don't know for sure how long it took them to reach the top, but they nearly made it there. Though, as the hikers were beginning the final leg of their journey to the summit, they disappeared. They were just hours away from claiming their place in world history, but they vanished off the face of the earth. 
never to be seen or heard from again. What makes this story so strange is that their bodies have never been recovered. On top of this, none of their equipment has ever been found either. By all means, it seems as though the expedition never even took place, and that is certainly a possibility. We know that the Russian government doesn't shy away from controversy. When asked about the expedition, the government refuses to admit whether or not the trek actually took place. It's possible that the trip truly did happen and that the government refuses to speak about it for fear of controversy popping up about the deaths of these brave men. However, if this is true, why have none of their bodies or belongings ever been recovered? On the flip side of this, the trek may have never happened at all, and the government was just puffing up its feathers to make itself look better than other countries from the time. We really don't know for sure, and it's possible this strange mystery will remain unsolved forever. Yeti Footprints in the Snow the following story is so profound that it made its way into National Geographic. The story itself may seem too good to be true, but according to researchers, it has been validated and is completely genuine. The year was 1951 when mountaineer Eric Shipton decided to reach the summit of Mount Everest. He had been visiting Nepal and was scouting out various routes that he and his team could take in order to reach the top of the mountain. And as he was planning, however, his investigation of the mountain quickly shifted gears when he encountered something he could not explain. As he was trying to map out a feasible course, he came across a series of footprints that looked rather bizarre. The footprints were far larger than any animal he'd ever seen. Worst of all, the prints did not come in pairs of four, rather they came in pairs of two, meaning that whatever left these footprints must have been walking in an upright position. He took a few samples of the footprints and documented them the best he could. As he would soon learn, the footprints were estimated to have been more than 30 centimeters long, and near the end of the print, clear impressions of human-like toes could be seen. While the footprints certainly looked like human footprints, they were far too large, and no human would dare to walk barefoot on the mountain. As you might expect, rumors began to circulate that Eric Shipton had just encountered something that could only be described as a yeti. This may sound like a far-fetched story, but again, it's completely real and has been investigated many times over the years. One of the most plausible theories about these tracks is that they could have been caused by a bear that was walking upright. This would certainly make sense, except for one crucial bit of information. The prints did not match that of a bear. Better yet, Eric was lucky enough to have found a small amount of fur that had been left behind. For many years, this fur was useless to investigators. However, as technology began to advance and new techniques were available, the fur was re-examined. In 2009, the fur was sent in for forensic analysis. Experts assumed that the fur must have belonged to a type of bear or other creature that had the ability to walk on two legs for short distances. However, much to their amazement, the fur did not match the genetics of a bear or any other currently known animal. The hair and the DNA that it provided were completely unique and were unlike anything we've ever seen before. In the end, experts came to the conclusion that the fur belongs to an animal that has never been spotted in the wild. However, without photographic evidence or further samples, there's no way to know for sure whether or not this fur could have belonged to a real life yeti. Thanks for watching. If you know of any other amazing mysteries that have taken place on Mount Everest, let us know in the comments and your suggestions may come up in a future video. But that's all for now. Be sure to hit that like button and ring the notification bell for more videos.